So good morning and welcome to the Universidad Nacional Autonoma de Mexico and University of Arizona Dipl Diplomata Program in Mexican Public Law and Policy. Today's panel is brought to you from the Arizona Mexico Commission's Education Committee, which has proudly been building cross border coalitions for over 60 years. My name is Kate Smith, and I currently serve as the fifth president of Rio Salado College in Tempe, Arizona. And I'm also honored to serve as the Arizona Mexico Commission's Education Committee co chair. My fellow co chair is also here today, Dr. Joe Veras, who is the vice president for student success at Grand Canyon University. And it is our distinct pleasure to welcome all of you to today's panel discussion that promises to be engaging and forward thinking with two leading universities coming together. For those of you who may not be as familiar, the Arizona Mexico Commission's mission is to improve the economic prosperity and quality of life for all Arizonans through strong public private collaborations in advocacy, trade, networking, and information sharing. The Arizona Mexico Commission has a one of a kind unique structure that we share with our sister organization, the Comisión Sonora Arizona, which includes 16 binational committees, each led by public and private sector co-chairs from Arizona and Sonora. These committees come together throughout the year to work on a variety of strategic projects and initiatives with a goal of contributing to the improved quality of life of Arizona and Sonora's economies and residents. The Education Committee has continued its work through this past year and a half, albeit impacted by the pandemic as every one of you has been as well. But we are looking forward to the summer where we have our plans underway for the Arizona Mexico Commission's 2022 summit. We look forward to welcoming Sonora's new governor, Alfonso Durazo, and also working alongside his newly appointed Secretary of Education, Dr. Aron Grajeda Bustamante. We look forward to resuming the good cross-border work that has always been a characteristic of the AMC Education Committee. And with that, it is now my pleasure to hand the program over to my co-chair, Dr. Veras, who will introduce our esteemed panelists and get us started. Take it away, Joe. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my absolute pleasure to introduce uh, very briefly because uh, just the incredible work that they have done is insurmountable, but very honored to introduce Dr. Juan Vega Gomez, who is a professor of law at UNAM Judiciary Research Institute. We have Teresa Miguel Stearns, Associate Dean and Director, uh, University of Arizona, James E. Rogers College of Law, and Mark Miller, who is the Dean and Ralph W. Bilby Professor of Law at the University of Arizona, James E. Rogers College of Law. Uh, we are very excited to hear of our presenters and listen to their presentations today. And with that, I will turn it over to Mark Miller. Uh, thank you, Joe, and thank you, Kate. And we really appreciate the opportunity to talk about this program, uh, which we believe with good evidence is extraordinary, unique, and valuable. It has been successful through its first few cycles, and now uh, we welcome the opportunity uh, to reach out uh, more broadly. I should mention that the Arizona-Mexico Commission is very familiar, not just to me, but around the University of Arizona for its longstanding work, and that many uh, professionals here have participated uh, in the work of the commission in the past. Uh, the program we'll talk about uh, today comes out of the deep relationship that the University of Arizona generally and our College of Law have to Mexico, Mexican politics, Mexican scholarship issues at the border, uh, the focus on Mexico across departments at the U of A has been uh, longstanding. Uh, let me give an illustration uh, for the College of Law outside of the Diplomado, the multi-course certificate in 
uh, Mexican constitutional law and policy that we will be discussing today. Uh, for four years now, uh, we have had a partnership with uh, the Mexican Foreign Ministry and its Diplomatic Training Institute to train diplomats and staff in fundamentals of US law. So the Arizona relationship or attentiveness to Mexico generally starts with a recognition of how deeply entwined the history governance peoples and economies of Arizona and Sonora are, but goes more broadly to the recognition that the relationship of the United States as a whole and Mexico are also deeply and inextricably intertwined. That led us to build on multiple years of relationships, uh, not only with leaders at UNAM, which as participants in the seminar will know is one of the extraordinary institutions of higher learning and research uh, in the world, uh, but in particular with an affiliated research institute, the Instituto de Investigaciones Jurídicas of UNAM. And multiple years of conversations led us to recognize uh, that there might be an opportunity to engage not only our students, faculty, and staff who were bilingual and interested in Mexican constitutional law and policy, immigration issues, big structural issues about how uh, legal systems uh, and, and countries work, uh, but that there was a much broader audience of professionals, both in and outside of the legal profession, uh, and recognizing in particular that many of those professionals in Arizona, uh, New Mexico, California, and Texas uh, will have the language skills to appreciate and enjoy uh, lectures by uh, uh, the most cutting edge uh, scholars and judges uh, related to from UNAM and in Mexico uh, on these issues. So the, the Diplomado that you'll hear about is not just another university's program in Mexican law, nor is it simply uh, a, a, a more of building on a good relationship between the University of Arizona uh, and UNAM and the Instituto. It is in fact, a unique opportunity for people uh, to who are interested to learn, hear about, engage, and through the Diplomado ultimately to be recognized uh, for their learning uh, on these cutting edge uh, issues. We think they are of interest uh, to actually a broad range of uh, professionals. We've had uh, judges uh, and lawyers and others. It is not limited to those with a legal background. Uh, uh, it, is, it is for those uh, with the language skills and with the interest in uh, Mexican legal system uh, and the interplay uh, of the relationship of uh, Mexico and, and uh, the US. We couldn't have a better partner than Onama the Instituto in particular. And I'm going to turn the floor over now to Professor uh, Juan Vega. As a scholar, as a collaborator, uh, as a friend, he has been an extraordinary partner, both with the particulars of building the course, but we've developed a, a deep working relationship. And I think those are the relationships, institutional and personal, that ultimately make this program so unique. Juan. Thank you very much, Dean Miller. It's a, it's a pleasure to, to speak on behalf of the Legal Research Institute of UNAM to this important Arizona-Mexico committee. Thank you very much, Kate, and thank you very much, Joe, for this kind introduction. Uh, the Legal Research Institute has over 100 scholars that are dedicated exclusively to legal research. I know it probably sounds odd to the American law faculties because they integrate their professors who do research into teaching. But in Mexico and at UNAM, we have several institutes dedicated exclusively to research. We also teach at the law faculty, of course, and other faculties and schools at UNAM, but we are evaluated for our research and publications. There are several other institutes 
for example, in Germany, the Max Planck Institute, that have these sorts of organizations where you have a, an important group of scholars that are just dedicated exclusively to research. So this diplomado is taught by the leading scholars in the field. Our institute was born as a comparative legal re research institute. But through the years, one of the most important subjects that we do research on is constitutional law. So that what that what th this is why it was obvious for us to engage in this important collaboration with the University of Arizona to do a diplomado on Mexican constitutional law, Mexican public law. Uh, several of our professors that teach the diplomado have important roles in Mexican politics and Mexican legal professions. For example, we have one of our professors of the diplomado is a colleague of mine who's a justice of the Supreme Court of Mexico, and he has taught before on the first edition of the diplomado. We have a former president of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights and many other uh, important scholars in the field. Uh, the Legal Research Institute at UNAM teaches many postgraduate programs nationwide uh, due to the importance of their faculty. We, we, do, we work on many postgraduate programs in Mexico and many other programs in Latin America. So it was a natural transition for us to start working with American universities. And this for us has been a really important program, a very innovative program, of course. It is taught in Spanish, even though most of our faculty speak English and have degrees from Anglo-American universities, it is important to emphasize this, that, that it is taught in Spanish because for them, there is no language barrier to teach these courses and that can, they can engage in discussions with the students of the Diplomado. They have lively debates, lively debates take place in some courses due to the fact that students are provided with prior readings and questions beforehand. So it's, it's a really important program. The, what, what is the main goal of the Diplomado? What can we expect of the Diplomado uh, as soon as you um, go through several of the, of the courses of the Diplomado? The idea, the main idea is to understand our Mexican constitutional law and to apply, uh, to have, to possess practical and theoretical tools to understand our Mexican constitutional law and to apply the different constitutional defense mechanisms in our legal system. So I hope this uh, Dean Miller and Teresa, Joe and Kate gives a, a broad view of the Diplomado and I'm open for questions and answers and discussions regarding specific topics on, on the Diplomado. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Vega. And now it's my opportunity uh, to share with everyone the logistics of the program. And, and thank you so much to the Arizona Mexico Commission, to Kate and Joe for, for hosting us today. Um, the, the Diplomado consists of four seven week classes. So it spans uh, the, the fall semester, there's two classes and then two more classes uh, back to back in the spring, in the spring semester. Um, because there are four separate classes, students, working professionals can join the Diplomado program at any time during those four classes. They don't have to start in August, for example. They can start in January or a student um, can start when, in, in, in the spring, in March. Um, but the students must complete four classes, four seven-week classes, in order to receive the diploma, the diplomado from UNAM, from the Instituto de Investigaciones Jurídicas. 
The classes are taught uh, online right now uh, because of COVID, we moved to an online format. So the courses are taught on Friday afternoons from 1.30 to 4.30. That's when we are live online with our faculty colleagues from, from the Instituto. But we, of course, have an asynchronous option because both students and especially working professionals have very busy schedules and we want to accommodate those busy schedules. So we record all of those classes. We post them to our online site, which we call D2L, uh, that everyone has access to. We post the, the video of, of the, the lecture online immediate after, immediately after class. And then over the course of the next couple of days, we actually add Spanish subtitles to the lectures. Uh, and, and our students have responded that having the subtitles, being able to go back through and watch the videos with, with the Spanish captions is very helpful um, because they really are learning a, a new language here, not just Spanish, but a Spanish legal language. And, and as, as Dr. Vega mentioned, the courses are taught in Spanish, but not every single student is completely bilingual or completely fluent because we record the lectures, because we provide readings in advance, Students, of course, must be proficient in Spanish to be able to follow the lectures, um, but, but they have tools to help them. And it, it, and, and it really helps them improve their Spanish as well. It's, 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 wonder, it's a wonderful opportunity um, to, to learn Mexican law firsthand in the Mexican language. And there are certain concepts such as ambado, which just don't translate into the US uh, legal system, um, because we have such distinct legal traditions, you, you know, here in the United States, it's the common law tradition. In Mexico, it's the civil law tradition. We really have very different procedures, very different concepts, and understanding them in the native tongue is, is just really important to having that grasp of, Mexi uh, of Mexican constitutional law, of public law, and policy. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm so fortunate to be facilitating this class and learning alongside our students. When I was a practicing attorney here in Tucson, actually, I, I, I find myself wishing I had had this class at my disposal uh, when, I, when I was a practitioner before I moved into academia. So um, when it's safe to go back in person, we will go back in person. Um, we don't know exactly what that's going to look like or when that will happen, but even when we do, we will still maintain the recordings, the asynchronous option for our students and our working professionals. We've had people participate in our class. Um, one, of, uh, one of our students was a practicing attorney in Houston who just finished the Diplomato because he was able to participate online asynchronous. Um, so he was able to watch the recordings on his own time and participate uh, in that asynchronous option. So for the, for the University of Arizona students who are taking, who are enrolled in this course, they receive two credits for each seven week class. And at the end of the class, they submit a small five page paper on a topic that they've learned about during, uh, during that seven week class. Our working professionals who are enrolled in the executive education program do not have to do those short five page papers. Those are for the University of Arizona. Those I grade uh, and, and I award the credit to our students. The working professionals, in order to receive the Diplomato, uh, merely have to do these very short teacher evaluations for UNAM after each, uh, after each professor lectures. And then at the end of the program, towards the end of that fourth class that they take, they will submit a 20 page, double spaced, 20 page research paper based on one of the topics uh, that we've covered uh, here in the program. And the UNAM faculty are actually the ones who review that final work and award the Diplomado from UNAM. Now, of course, we, uh, we require that of our students as well. So I have the pleasure of reading all of, those, all of those papers as well. Now, even though the course is taught in Spanish, we permit our students to submit their written assignments in English 
or Spanish. It's it's up to them. And of course, same with the work with our with our professional students, uh, with our working professionals. They uh, they can submit the the final paper in whichever language is is more comfortable to them. Now I am present at every class. Uh, I, I do more facilitation than teaching, but I have the I have the pleasure of clarifying a few legal concepts now and then, su su such as uh, the difference between the common law and the civil law system, or uh, public law versus private law. Some of our students are actually honors undergraduate students um, or bachelor's in law students here at the University of Arizona. So they don't have, um, you, you know, a a, a Juris Doctor, a first year of law school with a with a hard basic concepts underneath them. So I have I have the pleasure of explaining some of these some of these different uh, topics that come up. Um, I have office hours as uh, as does my co instructor, who's also a colleague here, a professor here at the at the College of Law, and we also have a preceptor, a teaching assistant who has already taken and received the diplomado. He's a third year law student. Uh, last year, we also had a third year law student who actually had a degree from uh, uh, his bachelor's degree in law um, from Mexico. So they are all participating in the class. We are all participating in the class alongside our students, providing support to our students and to our working professionals. So I think that about covers some of the logistics. And uh, I would love to answer some questions about the program. Uh, yes, Kate, you had your head raised. Yeah, well, there is a question uh, that was submitted and it says, I'm sorry, I may have missed this, but to participate in this program, what are the requirements? Great question. Right, so working for working professionals, there is no admission requirements. We have an executive education program uh, at the University of Arizona and at the College of Law, and it's simply registering through the executive education class. Tuition is significantly lower. Oh, and I see a, a question just popped in the chat. Tuition is significantly lower for our working professionals. One class, one seven week class, uh, the cost is $1,250. For our, for our students who seek, for anyone who is seeking credit from the University of Arizona, the cost is a bit higher. It's about twice that. Um, uh, I think it's closer to $3,000 for, for two credits. Um, so there's, there's, a, there's quite a, a bit of difference and quite a discount for our working professionals, for our executive education students. Uh, I see another question uh, in the chat. Um, from Saraji Padilla. Uh, I'm an attorney in Mexico and I work at the consulate in Mexico in Tucson. Can I take the diplomado? Of course. In fact, Rafael Barcelo, our, our, our counsel, our general counsel for Mexico is actually coming to class on the 19th. He'll be visiting our students in the diplomado. But yes, our course is open to anyone anywhere. It doesn't, you don't have to be in Arizona. You don't even have to be in the United States. Um, it, our course is 100% open to everyone. And I believe that was the vision that Dean Miller had when he and Dr. Vega uh, created this course. And, and Dean Miller, I don't know if you'd like to uh, elaborate on that at all. Well, I, I think you've done a nice job and the questions are great. Please keep them coming. Um, the, the cost is not great. We've kept it low. We want this to be encompassing uh, the tuition that comes in just helps us support uh, bringing the speakers up to Tucson. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> this, this is a labor of love. It's a lot of time, but it's so rich in the conversations and so deep. Uh, and it's, we did it the first year, not knowing if we continue. And it was such a positive reaction, both from the participants inside of the U of A and in the professional community and from the professors who enjoyed the conversations and the questions. Uh, that we have continued it. And I thought um, uh, Dr. Vega did a beautiful job of talking about the breadth of the subjects. Again, we do not assume any prior legal experience. If you have legal training, it's interesting. It can add to the conversation, but this is not in any way designed to be a course only for uh, lawyers and legal professionals. Uh, it's the breadth of the subjects 
uh, breadth and depth, but the breadth and welcoming framework of the subjects is good. If people aren't trained as lawyers and have questions, um, uh, Teresa, you and others of us, including uh, the, the one of the reasons we have a, a, a proctor involved is to is to give that space to ask questions if there are terms that are legal terms and not clear to give a comfortable space uh, to follow up. But it is designed to welcome a, a, a broad and diverse audience. Thank you, Dean Miller. And I know you have to run. I know you have another meeting at 1030. So please uh, feel free to, to sign off uh, whenever you need. Uh, Dr. Vega and I can, can stay on in your absence. Great. Thank you both. Again, thank you to Joe and Kate. And uh, I see a number of uh, participants. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have questions now, they'll continue. But also feel free to follow up directly with any of us. Thank you, Dean Miller. Uh, and I did just pop into the chat uh, our contact email for more information about the Diplomado. It's mexlaw at email.arizona.edu. And uh, one of us here will, will pick up that email and we're happy to speak with you over email or over phone to share more information about the Diplomado. What, one thing I failed to mention is that Dr. Vega is also at every class with us helping to clarify any legal concepts um, or you know, to answer any questions, as well as Dr. Vega's assistant, Iris, also from the Instituto. So <laughs> there's almost as many administrators, facilitators, and instructors as there are students uh, sometimes in class. Uh, but we all, we all come together to, to support the, the learning of our students through this, uh, this really unique course. Dr. Vega. Yes, so as uh, Teresa mentioned, uh, the works that have to be submitted at the end can be submitted in English or Spanish. And that kind of translates to the discussions in the classroom. Because sometimes, so I, I, what I want to do is to uh, inform people to feel free to participate. Because sometimes the discussions are usually in Spanish, but also they can uh, present their questions in English and the professors of UNAM uh, can respond in Spanish. So, so I think even if you think your Spanish is not that good regarding legal terms, I think you should feel free because sometimes you can have the facility, the ease of presenting your discussions in English or Spanish, and Teresa or I can jump in and clarify any issues in the classroom. So, so I hope uh, this is important for people who are not that, uh, don't feel that competent in uh, legal Spanish. Thank you, Dr. Vega. There's also a, a question in the chat about sharing some career paths after receiving the Diplomado. Like, in other words, how would people use the Diplomado once they've received it? Um, I, I can think of many ways right off the bat, just from my own practice, uh, at, at, at former practice as, as an attorney. Um, I worked uh, as an attorney here in Arizona. I did a lot of work along the border, both criminal and immigration. And understanding Mexican law and policy would have been incredibly helpful as I worked with the council here in Tucson, as I worked with judges on both sides of the border. Um, but I don't think it's just a, a, a legal uh, benefit. I think people doing business on both sides of the border uh, would benefit greatly from understanding the, the basic legal regime, how uh, the Mexican legal regime works, how the government is organized, the effect of cases handed down by the judiciary, um, how, um, how the legislator is organized, the powers of the president, which is, which is where my head is right now because that's exactly what we've been focusing on uh, during the last few weeks is the structure of the Mexican government, how power is distributed uh, through, the, through the different branches. It's been absolutely fascinating. Dr. Vega, do you have anything to add about potential uses of the Diplomato career paths? You know what, it, it's really interesting because uh, when I travel to Tucson and I, as soon as I encounter the, the customs officer, 
and they ask why am I entering the United States? And I tell them that it's to uh, coordinate and, and teach a diplomado at the University of Arizona. Then they continue their, their, their questions. And I, and I mentioned that uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Mexican constitutional law diplomado taught in Spanish in Tucson. At first, it, it, it's, it's a kind of a, a, a weird a program to have, but as soon as they think about it a bit, and this is, has been my experience talking to people in the States, uh, as, as soon as they think about it a bit, it makes a lot of sense. And I, I think uh, Dean Miller has to be um, congratulated for this. Uh, you, not only do you uh, acquire the specific concepts of the Mexican legal systems to understand to your practice due to the important cases that you have in Mexico or the United States that have uh, that need to analyze Mexican law in the States or American law in Mexico. So I think that's a, a really important uh, uh, point to, to, to highlight. But, but also, I think uh, the important Mexican-American population in the United States uh, and their interest in Mexican law. The, the first part of the diplomado, correct me if I'm wrong, Teresa, the first part of the diplomado has a lot to do with uh, a constitutional history. And that, that makes, that is, I, uh, we have been doing this for two years, almost two years now. And I think that has a lot of interest, very, interest uh interesting for people who have a mexican american upbringing but they haven't analyzed mexican history uh in a detailed uh, manner so it's 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 i think it makes plenty of sense and it's a really important program not only because we have uh, uh important relationships, commercial, legal, as, as I mentioned, between our bordering states. But it has all these uh, different uh, interests that I think has been part of, of the, the success and interest in the diplomado. So I hope I answered partly the, the question that was addressed to me. You know, Dr. Vega, I think you hit on, on, on something just two things really that are just fascinating. And that is the history of Mexico because it is so intertwined with our history, um, whether it's uh, talking about the Gadsden Purchase uh, or the Mexican-American War or um, uh, the difference how we came to have civil law systems versus common law systems. Those are all discussed in, in, that, uh, in, in that module. And the entire course, because the um, because the scholars from Mexico um, are so familiar with our legal system, many times it's taught through a comparative lens. So they'll so they'll share um, how something works in Mexico, but then they'll also say, and that's not exactly the way it works in the United States. In my understanding, and then we get into a, a really interesting discussion uh, about. The differences, but the differences as well as the similarities in our system. So we are frequently learning Mexican law through the lens of a comparative legal scholar. And I think that is incredibly useful to our students who have some understanding frequently of the US legal system. And I, th I think that is just really, really helpful. If I can, there was also in the chat, um, it was brought up, um, you know, that law, a law degree, a law background was not necessary. And the question was asked, could the background be in business, which I think is an excellent segue from from the last question. <laughs> oh, I think I think having a business background is exceedingly helpful uh, and would really add a, a dimension to our discussions actually in class that I would very much welcome. Having a business background is perfect for then building 
um, a legal knowledge on top of that business background. And I think that fits in perfectly with the Arizona Mexico Commission with the work that, that you all do as well. If I may add just a small point, since, since we are teaching Mexican law to American uh, students, uh, that, it, it's an important point because we don't we don't have any preconditions right. or prerequisites to understanding Mexican law. So I think people with other backgrounds should feel free to enroll in some of the classes of the diplomado because we're we're practically to engage in, in, and clarify any issues they have regarding the Mexican constitutional uh, legal system. Actually, we have a class uh, that uh, is uh, called how to find the applicable law in Mexico. So this is another tool that is important for people understanding Mexican legal system. When they're faced with a legal issue, Mexican legal issue, then where, where do I look? Where, where can I find the uh, applicable uh, law in Mexico regarding specific cases? So I think it, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty much basic that people with other backgrounds can feel free to enroll, uh, even though it's basic, that doesn't mean that it's not a serious and uh, very uh, oriented and dedicated and specifically uh, discussed topics that are held in the classroom. So I, I hope this helps. And we have a good mix of students in the class right now. Um, we have a BA in law student, someone who's working on their bachelor's in law here at the University of Arizona, which is also a, a unique program that Dean Miller started. We have an undergraduate honors student who is not a BA in law student, but she's a, a government uh, she's studying government and um, she's doing wonderfully in the course. And we also have traditional JD students. Uh, we have master, a master's of legal studies students and we have a working professional. We have an immigration attorney all in the class together. So it really creates very rich conversations. Um, but as Dr. Vega said, because it's Mexican Law 101, everybody is starting from the same uh, from the same place. Dr. Vega, I love the next question, and it's actually something that has occurred to me with our pending trip uh, to UNAM. A group of us are going down to visit UNAM and the Instituto the first week of December. And Jaime Herrera asks, when the program returns to a physical environment, is there an opportunity to visit UNAM and the Instituto de Investigaciones Jurídicas? What do you think? Of course. <laughs> I think it would be wonderful. I think it would be a great field trip. And something we could. UNAM is a public. Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Please. UNAM is a public university here in Mexico, as many of you know. And uh, anybody can feel free to visit UNAM and the Legal Research Institute and when they have the possibility. We're doing kind of a hybrid right now, hybrid um, modality regarding, we're going to the Legal Research Institute a couple of days a week, but as the question mentions, as soon as th things go back to normal, we can, through Teresa and the University of Arizona, program any visits you guys have, and we can organize that without any problem. All right, Jaime Sold, wonderful. I think that's just a, a brilliant idea. And what, what a, I can't imagine a more interesting way for our students to really understand even how, how law is taught in Mexico, which provides lots of insights uh, into, into the legal system as well. Thank you for that question. Thank you for all the questions. These have been just terrific. And you can take advantage of not only visiting UNAM, but the Supreme Court, et cetera. So there's so many, so many places you can visit regarding things that have to do with the diplomado and Mexican constitutional law and politics.
Well, I will put one more call out if there are any other comments or questions um, before we close out. But this has been a fantastic panel so far. Uh, I think if you saw in the chat, um, Dr. Miguel Stearns put um, where you can find the curriculum. If you a question was asked about looking deeper into the curriculum, so that link has been provided in the chat as well as an email address. If you are interested in contacting someone um, about the program, and so are there any other questions or comments? Please enter them. And if not, then I will hand it over for for some closing comments. Well, I just want to say thank you. I, I would like to make one more um, uh, one more comment about we've been talking uh, about in the Diplomado uh, mostly about Mexican public law and constitution constitutional law. I do want to know that there is one class, one seven week class that is focused on human rights, and it's a fascinating class that I know is a, is of great interest to our students, and I'm sure to many people who would be interested in the Diplomado. And we not only talk about human rights in Mexico, but we talk about the entire inter-American system uh, through the Organization of American States. We talk about the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, the Inter-American Court of, of Human Rights, of which the US is not a member, but Mexico is. So it provides a really fascinating discussion of human rights through the entire region. So uh, that's the last point I will make. I could go on forever. I, I love this program. I'm so pleased to be a part of it. I'm, I'm really honored to be a part of it. It's, it's such a unique program, one of a kind. Uh, I, and, and thank you, Joe. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Dr. Vega, for taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, and and thanks, to, thanks to this audience for coming out and, and learning about the Diplomado. Dr. Vega, I don't know if you have any Closing remarks? <laughs> not, not much, not much. Just uh, uh, reiterate the thank you to the Arizona and Mexico Committee and the University of Arizona through Teresa Miguel Stearns and, and Tim Miller. And it's also a pleasure for me to be part of this Diplomado. And I'm open also for any questions uh, you have and, and we can talk about them and hope you uh, enroll in some of the, of the classes of the Diplomado and we can see you there at the sessions. Uh, in class sessions or the uh, Zoom sessions. So thank you very much, Kate, and thank you very much, Joe. Well, thank you both. And I, I hope you're seeing in the chat, there is some thank yous um, all for all of you attending. We, we greatly appreciate your time and your attention today. Thank you for joining us. Please, um, we, we welcome you to any of the Arizona Mexico Commission um, forums, panels, summits that, that we put on. We look forward to connecting with you. But Teresa and Juan, we cannot thank you enough. I want to go sign up. <laughs> it just sounds fantastic. I, I love it. So um, thank you so much for giving of your time and all the energy and work that you've put into building such a unique and outstanding uh, program. So thank you so much. And to everybody, thank you for joining us and have a wonderful Wednesday. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thanks again. Thank you. Gracias a todos. Gracias. Hasta pronto. Hasta luego. Y nos vemos en México. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kate. Thank you. This was it's fantastic. Been... Yeah. Really, really appreciate it. I'm, I'm thrilled learning about it. I, I wish I had a little more time because <laughs> I would love to come join. It just sounds amazing. Well, I, I'm just so lucky to be able to attend every class and yeah. learn alongside our students. I'm just wow. fun. It's just well, fun. and that mix you described of the professionals who are joining and the students wow. is that's got to lead to incredible learning, just cross disciplinary learning within law. It's so, pretty exciting. Yeah. 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 Well, it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you All so right. much. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.